In this video we're going to look at the body's three lines of defence against disease. We're going to look at these three lines of defence as the natural control of disease within the body and the three lines, the physical barriers, non-specific response and immune response. So firstly, the natural control of disease. So this is the natural process that occurs in our body to fight disease. And there are three lines of defense against disease. The physical barriers, including the skin, non-specific response, which is about uh, phagocytes, white blood cells, leukocytes, and pus, and the immune response or acquired immunity. So this is a specific response. What we're going to do now is go into more detail for each one of these lines of defense. Now, when we're looking at our lines of defense, we use the analogy of a castle. So the first line of defense, the physical barriers, in our castle, we think of the walls and the moat. So they're physical barriers that are designed to keep attacking things out. And in this case, we're talking about pathogens uh, attacking our bodies. So we've got a few ways or a few physical barriers to keep these pathogens out. Firstly, we have the skin, which is a tough outer layer around all the parts of our body. Uh, so the microorganisms cannot get through the skin easily. And as well as not being able to get through it being tough, there's also a population of microorganisms that live symbiotically with us uh, that prevent other microorganisms from uh, multiplying on the surface. Parts of the body that aren't covered by skin are generally covered by mucous membranes. So if we think about the mouth, the digestive system, the respiratory system in the lungs, the urinary tract, as well as the reproductive system. So all of these are lined by a thick, slimy mucus that's produced by the body. Uh, this mucus can engulf pathogens that are looking to find a place to invade the body. And as well, this mucus contains the antibody immunoglobulin A and this can stop some pathogens uh, and deactivate them and stop some pathogens from infecting the body. Another physical bar barrier that we have that works with these uh, mucous membranes are cilia and they're minute hair-like cells that project from the lining of the respiratory surface, so the nose, trachea, bronchial tubes in the lungs. So all these things have these minute hair-like projections coming out. And what this does is, like a carpet that has a grain and everything points in the one direction, uh, these cilia all point towards the outside of the body. So as a pathogen comes inside the body, it will get caught up in the mucus, and that mucus will then get swept uh, by the cilia out of the body. Okay, the second line of defence is the non-specific response that the body has to the defence. Uh, in the Carson analogy, we think of this as the soldiers and the archers. So they basically kill invading uh, things indiscriminately, same as the non-specific response. And we've got a couple of things that do that. So the first thing is the inflammation response. So there's a few chemicals that mediate this response, including histamine and prostaglandins. And what they do is they increase the blood circulation to the area, which is why uh, around an infected site, your, the skin often goes red from that increased uh, blood circulation. This brings more white blood cells. White blood cells are the cells that fight infection as well as uh, being able to remove toxins. So once the white blood cells break down the pathogens, those toxins can then be removed from the increased blood flow. And what happens is the vessels dilate, get wider, and become leaky, which allows these uh, toxins to move in and out of cells uh, and the white blood cells uh, to move around the site of infection. As well as this inflammation response is the white blood cells or leukocytes and they move to this infected area uh, and those leaky blood vessels they can move into the infected cells and they can devour or using a devouring cell action or phagocytosis 
they will basically engulf any foreign material and kill it. These dead leukocytes, dead white blood cells, so once they engulf something, they then basically commit suicide and kill themselves uh, to kill that cell as well. And this is what forms a yellowish discharge uh, or pus. So when you've got an infected site and it's pussy, those that yellow pus comes from the dead white blood cells that have engulfed the pathogen. We then have immune response or specific response. This is our third line of defense or our last line of defense. And in the carcinal analogy, we think of this as the spies and assassins. So they can actually work out who is attacking, who's in charge, and they can go and target particular pathogens. The first step in immune response is basically the nonspecific response. So these white blood cells or leukocytes, and in particular there's a type of leukocyte called a macrophage, uh, it engulfs the pathogen, uh, and in this we call use the word pathogen and antigen synonymously, okay? and you just need to remember that that's bad. So just think pathogen, antigen, that's bad. Um, so they engulf that pathogen, and then what they do is they display the antigen on the surface. Now, if this is a new antigen or a new pathogen that's been found inside the body, uh, that displaying it on the surface isn't going to do anything because the body can't recognize it uh, as something that it's fought before. Uh, so that displaying on the surface pretty much stops there and we stop at that non-specific response. However, if this is something that's been come across in the body before, the body has what's called acquired immunity, and that's what kicks in this specific response. So once that antigen is displayed on the outside of the macrophage, or the leukocyte, uh, another antibody comes across. Now antibodies are things that are produced by the body, so they're the good things, okay? So we don't get antigens and antibodies confused, so antigen, pathogen, antibody made by the body. Okay, so these are the good ones. So in particular, there's a T helper cell, which is a type of antibody. What that does is that recognizes the antigen that's been uh, displayed on the surface, and it signals using a type of chemical called cytokines, and it signals to produce other antibodies that will specifically kill that antigen. These second type of antibodies are called T-killer cells. And once they are signaled to attack, they will come out and find any cells that are displaying that antigen and destroy them. So this is where the immune response or acquired immunity occurs. So for acquired immunity, the body has to have fought this antigen before uh, and therefore know which T killer cells to produce, to produce uh, which, uh, to work out which way to actually kill those infected cells. In this video, we've looked at the natural control of disease and the analogy for remembering the natural control of disease being the castle analogy. We have the physical barriers, which in the castle are the walls and the moat and in the body are the skin, mucous membranes, and cilia. We've looked at the non-specific response, which in the castles is the archers and the soldiers, and which in the body is the inflammation response and phagocytosis of the leukocytes, or white blood cells. We've then looked at specific response, or immune response, the third line of defense. Uh, in the castle, that would be the spies and the assassins. However, in the body, we're looking at the antibodies, in particular the T helper and T killer cells, which recognize the antigen and work to kill it quickly.